What do your digital footprints say about you? What do I mean by digital footprint? I mean all the stuff that we leave online, the digital tracks and traces, the stuff that makes up other people's perception of who we are, as well as our own. Some of those things are really visible, and some of them are really invisible. Some of them are the things that you've, you've watched, the trail of things you've watched on YouTube that recommend something else. Some of them are things like your search history. But a lot of the things that we leave online are stuff that are entirely within our control and are about our own kind of creative process. So I want you to start off by thinking about what the last thing that you shared online was. Now, this might have been two or three minutes ago, this might have been hours ago, this might have been days ago. What was that last thing that you shared? It might have been something on Facebook, it might have been something on Snapchat. I know that I just put out a tweet automatically because I like to be a little bit smug when I'm speaking. Um, but what, what was that last thing? What does that thing say about you? If someone is looking at that, what does that tell you? Does that tell you, does that tell them what you are? Does it tell you about your interests? Maybe it says something that's really positive or quirky. So again, I'm being a bit smug, this is baking of mine. Um, maybe it shows that you've got interest. Maybe it shows that you do a particular kind of job. Maybe it shows a particular kind of hobby that you have. Maybe that's something you'd really want to show to the world, something really positive. So if someone looked at that, you'd think, brilliant, I recognize that person as myself. And I think that's what I would like to portray to people. And maybe you're portraying different parts of yourself to different kinds of audiences. So uh, Evan Goffman writes about having different kinds of identities for different kind of contexts. So presenting yourself in sort of on-stage ways and off-stage ways, just being off-stage or just come on stage, it feels very relevant right now. Um, but sometimes you have to have different kinds of identities and they don't always stay totally separate. And in fact, some of the things you share online, maybe they're not presenting you exactly how you'd want to do it. Um, <laughs> so this is my polite version of sharing something slightly inappropriate online. This is my cat Godfrey. He's on Twitter and Instagram. Please don't judge me. Um, <laughs> or, or judge me. That's OK. Um, you might be sharing stuff you don't really intend to get a wider airing. Now, Godfrey's not too embarrassed, although I have to say I didn't ask his consent to use his image, which I really should have. Um, but maybe something gets out of hand, maybe something goes to an audience you don't expect it to get to. And then your identity starts to be this slight model of things that are intended for different kinds of audiences. You get this idea of context collapse, where your friends and your colleagues and people who you run with, people who you, uh, you create craft with maybe, they all converge in the same space. They all start to see different parts of your identity. And that's quite challenging. And when you're sharing social media, that's really likely to happen. Uh, your parents might be on Facebook, people who you don't know might turn out to people who you do know when you're sharing stuff in anonymous spaces. You have to be thinking about what that identity is projecting about you and what you want it to project about you. And it's not just about what you share and where you share it, it's also who you share it, who you share it with. You can choose, but most of us don't choose to. So we've been doing some research with students at the University of Edinburgh, and we've been asking them to sort of tell us how they use social media, how they think about their identity online. And 61% of them very, very rarely check their privacy settings. And 5% of them have found something online that they did not want to see. They thought it had been taken away. They didn't think they posted it. So privacy settings and who you share with and the circles that you share with matter. You share to these networks, they share further on. You have control of that, but most of us choose not to exercise that. And that's kind of interesting. So we have these footprints. We have these things that are visible. We have these things that are invisible. We also create other people's footprints for them, but we don't always think about it that way. So we have, in all of these social media platforms, the ability to tag people. And that's great, that's lovely, you can say you're all in the same place, and it's really good until you've turned down this one invitation to do something quite important, and someone tags you in an event somewhere else. That's not so great. Uh, if someone tags you in a photo, and it's not a good photo. Now, sometimes that has a really serious consequence. So a lot of trainee teachers, particularly in the US, have found that pictures of them drinking, not drinking underage, just drinking when they're sort of in their 20s, have been enough to impact on their employment potential because that's an image that their employers don't want to have of them. Sometimes it's much less important than that. Sometimes it's like, you haven't got me at the right side. I don't like that picture. That picture is not very flattering. <laughs> That matters too, though. You have to respect people's witches. And we're still trying to figure out this etiquette about what we tag, what we share, how our digital footprints are constructed, and how we are constructing by other people every day. So again, when we did research with our students, 11% of people said they had been tagged in an unwanted way in a photograph. 11%, that's a huge number. And again, thinking about that seriousness potentially, there are some professional bodies and things that from the moment that you start university, sometimes from before that, 
your presence online actually is part of your professional identity. Student nurses are asked from the day they start university to consider themselves a professional. That is how they're supposed to present themselves online. That's a really big ask, I have to say. Um, so the stuff that you're sharing now, the stuff that you share every day, can have long-term consequences. The thing is, though, I'm sounding a bit scary, and I love social media. I am on all of the social media. If you Google me, you will find me all over the place. I totally love these things. They are creative, fantastic tools. They are like a big, giant yarn shop for I Am Anissa, too. Um, and it's a huge suite of things that I used to be creative and wonderful and create marvelous things. I am not going to dissuade you from setting stuff up. There can be really good things about being present online. Again, with our students in the research, 16% of them had had approaches for jobs, for volunteering opportunities, because of having presence online. I've had professional opportunities because I share pic cooking pictures. It can be really fantastic to build up your network. It's a really positive thing, as long as you're being deliberative and thinking about what you're doing. Because once something is out there, it's really hard to get it back. Uh, these things, they go out of hand, they grow, they network. You end up with this big tangle of things. If you want to take back a post, you might delete it in one place, it might have been copied to somewhere else. If you want to get something removed, you might have to ask your friends to kind of forget it was ever there and to remove a screenshot of it as well. It's not that easy to take stuff back once it's out there. It's not impossible. The stuff that I posted when I was a teenager online, just about young enough to have posted stuff online when I was a teenager, that has disappeared. And some of it I'm pleased about, some of it I really miss. But you have to assume stuff will stick around a little bit. And trying to cut it back is, is difficult. So I want you to think 10 years ahead. It's 2026. I have no idea what state the world is in, especially after the last few weeks. Um, think ahead. It's 2026. What does the digital footprint of stuff that you are leaving now say about you? Is it saying the right things? Is that history of you? Because we will all have a history of us recorded in lots of different places. What does that say about you? Is it what you want it to? And when you post something next time, I want you to think about that. I want you to think, this thing that I'm sharing, this post, this comment, it might be silly, it doesn't have to be serious, having a personality is 90% of what social media is about. Being fun and lively is fine. But I want you to think about what are you creating? Are you creating something beautiful and complex, like this Dale Chihuly glass sculpture? Maybe you can't see everything. Maybe different audiences see different things. But interesting and complex and a brilliant presentation of you. That's what I want you to think about when you think about making a digital footprint for the future. And I want you to think about that when you're thinking about how you deal with stuff that you don't want to stay online forever. Just to be thinking about the long-term view of it. It might be ephemeral, it might stick around forever, but always be thinking, how do I make my digital footprint say the right thing about me? And how can I make that a choice that I've taken control of? Thank you.